Hello everybody, thank you for clicking on this tutorial. Um, in this video I'm going to show you guys what uh, this histogram is and how you can use it to benefit your pictures and make them better and go for the look you're going for. So a lot of times this graph is ignored in Blender, it's just kind of over here on the left if you're inside the the, the uh, image editor, the UV image editor, you just hit T to open and close and you can see it there along with the waveform, Fetoroscope and some other tools that help you view colors in your picture. So, um, to start out, we're going to basically just go over the graph. So let me expand this into full view, and this is gonna, I'm just gonna help tell you guys, uh, or yeah, this is what the graph does. So, um, starting with these six values here, or options, you can choose what the graph is displaying and what you can see from the left side here that the left side this okay so the bottom the x-axis here is values and the y-axis is the basically saturation of those of, of colors that you choose here along, along the bottom so so for example let's just get into this and I'll show you um, right now it's showing us the red the green and the blue of this picture over the values of 0 to 255. So you can see because this picture is brighter it makes sense that a lot of this this curve is going to be more towards the right of this graph. There's no darks in this picture that's why this left very part of this graph right here is blank. So what you can you can read from this graph and tell is is that in the mid mid-range values of this photo, there's more red, and then as you start getting higher, there's more green, and then as you keep going higher, there becomes more blue. And you can, that's evident in the photo. Well, maybe not by looking at it, but that's what this, gra this graph helps us see. So we can view each of these individually by clicking on the red, and the green, blue, and uh, the alpha if you have an alpha channel, which this one doesn't. And this, you can also see the luminosity, which is basically just the combined brightness, sort of, of the picture. So as the value goes from 0 to 255, how saturated is all your colors? How bright are your colors, basically? And that's that. So let's look at another example. Um, I'll drag in a picture of this girl here. Perfect. And um, this one is going to be quite a bit different because we get a lot of overexposed areas in her face and in the background here. And this is a really good demonstration of how grass change. So if you want it to change the scaling of the graph, you just click on it and you can change you can just drag it like that. Okay. Now for this one here, if we look at the luminosity, you can see that we have this really big spike at the left and it tapers off basically as as you get into the higher values. And what that's saying is that the darker values, so the darker parts, maybe her hair or these dark shadows, are really, really saturated. And as you get brighter and brighter, they become, as the value gets higher and higher, they become less saturated and less saturated. If we look at RGB, you can see that we have the left side here that's peaked and coming in kind of lower towards the middle and you can see that the right side also peaks which is also evident in this picture because her skin is overexposed or just very bright almost according to this as bright as 255 value goes and um, as well as the flowers and things like that and then on the left the as the darks and the, there's a lot of darks in this picture around her face and things like that so this graph is evident and you in the picture and you can see kind of how you get that and there's not a really a lot of midtones in here which is why there's nothing really in the middle so it's pretty basic it's pretty simple but this can help you as an artist determine what what look you're going for so if you're going for a darker look and you're not sure if you're clipping out some blacks for example then you can look at this to see if everything's pushed up against the left here. Some general tips with this is you almost want it to be, depending on the look you're going for, a, a bell curve sort of look. That way you have 
more detail in the the um, the mid tones of your picture, and as you get to the outside, you you can maintain that level of detail. But if you cram everything up against the right of the wall like this, like this picture here does, you're not going to have any detail in those areas, which as you can see we don't. In these black areas, there's no detail, and so what you want to have happen is you want to have consistent sort of um, sort of graph. I don't know if this is making any sense. I think I'm just jabbering on here. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, so okay, let's just look at another picture. Moving on. Enough of that. Enough of listening to me talk. Here's a really, really dark picture. You can see, for example, in this one how there's really not a lot of bright colors. There's more, a lot more dark colors and everything's kind of pushed up against the left side of this graph. And um, in this scenario, this is what the photographer was going for, obviously. So this kind of graph model representation of this picture is good. This is a good representation. Um, however, for like um, like in the middle here, these midtones, you can see we have a lot of detail, which you can see where there's light hitting. You can see the uh, the I think the coffee beans really well. But then once everything's the darks are squished up against the left side of this edge here, you're losing. You don't have detail. So in between the coffee beans here. And um, and things like that. So if you if you look at a picture, you 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 don't want to have things squished up against the wall because then you're losing detail. So this is kind of a short, quick uh, tip there with the histogram. I I, I think that's it. I, I I just got back from vacation uh, for about a week and a half, so I apologize for not making any videos. But I want to get back started with that. So um, another cool thing here with the sample line is you can test a certain area of your picture by clicking and dragging like that, and it'll test it over that text the picture over that line. You can view your red, your green, and your blue values over that line. Left the left part of the line is the left part of this graph, and the right is the right. So. Yeah, pretty basic there. Yeah. This vectoroscope is... I'll get onto that later. I'll make more videos on the rest of this stuff here. I feel like I should just be done now and stop talking. I will. Okay, guys. Thank you for uh, watching this quick tip. And stay uh, stay in touch for, for more videos. Subscribe. And I'll be putting another one out here soon. So, thanks. Bye.